In this busy modern world, we all need some peace and quiet at times. And we need to be in areas like this to remind us that we're all part of the natural world ourselves. On today's program, we would like to show you how the conservators have been helping to preserve Kessler Woods. And I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to the current president, Bill Hager, and to our most recent past president, Eric Reinsterna. My name is Bill Hager, and I'm the president of the Newton Conservators, elected at the spring meeting this year. I have been a member of the Newton Conservators for over a decade. The Newton Conservators were founded in 1961. They were the first environmental group to really get active in, in looking to preserve open spaces. At that time, people realized that the open spaces were going down. There was increase in population, construction, all over the place, including some beautiful areas along the Charles River uh, where, where, where uh, converted over to uh, businesses and, and to uh, apartments. So we were very much active in, in all throughout this period since 1961 in preserving as much land as we can throughout Newton. We first had to educate ourselves and then we had to educate others about the importance of, uh, of acquiring and preserving open spaces such as woodland areas, um, marshlands, um, call them wetlands nowadays, and woods and playgrounds, and even, even uh, uh, grass-covered areas like golf courses are, are, are considered uh, open spaces. Since, since our founding in 1961, we have uh, helped the city of Newton and other organizations preserve over 350 acres of land. The, the next year, we, we want to focus on Kessler Woods and Agena Farm. We want to make sure that those two areas are well protected and in use by the citizens. We also are interested in, in, in following the trail of the aqueduct, which meanders through Newton. A lot of it is open where people can walk on it or use bicycles, but we like to find the areas that are kind of blocked for some reason and make that more of a continuous pathway throughout Newton. Plus, we're also open to any type of land donations and if you check our, our website at Newton Con uh, Conservators, uh, you can actually uh, see methods that people can use to donate portions of land or protect portions of land while they're still there uh, for uh, preservation. In the last couple of years, uh, the conservators focused on a couple of land acquisitions. Uh, they were the most important uh, things that we did. One was the Angino Farm and the other was uh, Kessler Woods. We've had a list of properties that are important to us to see that they are protected as open space, but uh, protection costs money. And we, for a long time, we didn't have any money and one by one watched properties uh, acquired for development. Uh, but uh, a few years ago, the city of Newton, through the voters, uh, approved the uh, Community Preservation Act, and that made uh, money available for acquisitions. And so that's been the focus of what we've done, is to help arrange acquisitions, economical acquisitions, for the city to, to uh, purchase open space. Well, I certainly think we should be acquiring open space at this time. Newton is very, actually uh, very poor in terms of uh, open space. We don't have as much as many of the uh, cities and towns around us. We have golf courses which serve as some of our important open spaces. Aside from those, we don't have uh, a great deal of open space. And so it is important to uh, preserve the ones that we have left, especially the ones that are uh, significant in terms of having uh, brooks running through them, which Kessler Woods does or uh, being an important historic uh, property in, a, in the city's last farm, which is what uh, Angino Farm is. Well, I think it's important uh, that we certainly that we spend money on schools and public safety, but uh, a healthy community has uh, money for, for those things and also for open space. If you can't do all those things, you, you probably don't have as healthy a community as you want to. So it's best for us to do all of that. If you look at it in terms of the uh, the am amount of dollars that a household might spend on uh, on open space through the com or open space affordable housing and historic preservation, if your tax bill is four thousand dollars in a given year, you're spending forty dollars toward uh, community preservation funds, which is one percent of your money, which is not a great deal in in the big picture, but that money goes a long way to making this a much more livable community. Now we're heading over to Kessler Woods and Doug Dixon is going to introduce us to that property. 
Doug Dixon is a past president of the Newton Conservators, a member of the City's Conservation Commission, and a chair of the Community Preservation Committee. Doug, is this uh, pathway here part of the Kessler Woods or some adjacent area? Well, this is actually part of the Sawmill Brook Conservation Area. There's a narrow neck along here that uh, this pathway is on. And then over in that direction, if you uh, look beyond uh, to the trees down the way, uh, that's what uh, is now part of the new Kessler Woods uh, Conservation Area. Uh, and this connects further down with a larger parcel of the Sawmill Brook Conservation Area. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that we are interested in acquiring this property uh, because it gives us um, a larger contiguous area mm -hmm. of conservation property. So perhaps new pathways can be constructed in the Kessler Woods area which will join up with this one? That's our hope. Yeah. That's our right. hope. And uh, that, would give, that would give people access uh, to this property and, and uh, you know it's uh, here for people as well as uh, wildlife and for other purposes. Yeah. One of the things that makes this piece of property so interesting and, and appealing uh, is that it, it, con it contains both wetlands and uplands uh, and uh, the wetland area of course has uh, an ecosystem that's uh, uh, typical of wetland areas, uh, very different uh, plant species and, and so on. Uh, the brook that flows through that area, the Sawmill Brook, is a, a perennial stream, so it has water year-round. Um, there are upland areas uh, that um, uh, have primarily uh, coniferous forest. Uh, on the other side, where there's uh, a lot of uh, pudding stone, there's also uh, uh, more deciduous forest with uh, uh, white and red oaks and a number of other uh, trees that are uh, typical, uh, typical of that uh, ecosystem. here talking with Mayor David Cohen. Good morning, Mr. Good Mayor. Good morning. We like to talk to you about the application of the Community Preservation Act to the acquisition of Kessler Woods. Can you tell us a little bit first of all about the history of Kessler Woods? Sure, uh, I can and I think it's great that the, uh, the conservators are doing this program. They have been a uh, force for maintaining really the quality yeah. of life and the quality of our environment in the city for, I think, over four decades. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah, Kessler Woods uh, was, uh, has been owned by uh, NSTAR for uh, several decades, and they originally purchased it for uh, use as potential development of uh, power and uh, switching stations on that site. They never developed it, and then with the uh, passage of the Utilities Deregulation Bill in 1996 by the state legislature, uh, that called for utilities like NSTAR to divest themselves of all surplus assets. And uh, this 40 plus acre parcel of land was deemed to be a surplus asset. And so as early as late 1996 and early 1997, uh, they uh, began talking about uh, selling off the land. Right. And uh, that's really where the, uh, uh, the saga, uh, as far mm -hmm. as Newton is concerned, began. And, uh, you want me to tell you the story? Yes, please, okay. go ahead. Yeah, this is a good story. Um, basically, what happened was back in, uh, in 1997 and 1996, NSTAR was making all these noises about selling the land. Yeah. And we were trying to get NSTAR to give it to us. And of course, they said thank you, but no thank you. Uh, then for, there was a referendum in 1998 on the utilities uh, divestment uh, law. And uh, that really uh, uh, put a hold on all of NSTAR's activities. And they really didn't start again until 2001 which was very fortunate for us because in the meantime, the city of Newton had passed the uh, Community Preservation Perfect. Act, which meant that we had a source of funds. So when they came to us and basically they said, well, we're gonna sell the land within 60 days and would you like to put up a bid? For a public entity like the city of Newton, 60 days was nowhere <laughs> near enough to uh, uh, to put up a bid. So 
we actually talked with, not only with NSTAR directly, but with the Attorney General's office, uh, with uh, uh, the Governor's Development mm -hmm. Office, and working together, we got a six-month extension in which to put up a bid. During that time, we basically solicited uh, offers uh, and plans, requests for development, requests for proposals from a number of developers yeah. on uh, how to develop the land and how to preserve open space. And the, uh, uh, the final package that we got, we actually agreed with a developer called Cornerstone. Oh. Uh, they had a development that preserved a tremendous amount of the, the land. And uh, we went with them, and we went before the Community Preservation Committee, which was very cooperative and approved uh, a funding uh, proposal for this. Cornerstone uh, is putting up some $10 million, and the City of Newton is putting up $5 million. And that public-private partnership is what enabled us to uh, save so much of the open space. And uh, the money comes from the Community Preservation Act, which is a 1% surcharge right. on uh, everyone's property tax bill, which works out to about $1.8 million. Oh. In addition to that, the state uh, has come up with a matching amount so that dollar for dollar, they match the municipal oh. contribution. So uh, the $1.8 million that our local taxpayers put up is matched uh, by a $1.8 million grant uh, by the, uh, uh, the state as well. So it, it really is a, a great uh, investment and, and leverages a tremendous amount of additional yeah. dollars. In this case, not only did it leverage the $1.8 million of additional state funds, but it really, uh, the five million dollars of, of municipal funds is leveraging the 10.1 uh, million dollars of private funds mm -hmm. to uh, uh, preserve open space and also to uh, develop affordable housing as well. Uh, the city had um, fortuitously um, adopted the Community Preservation Act. Tell us a uh, bit about that. Well, the Community Preservation Act is, is um, uh, uh, a, a dedicated source of funding that gives cities and towns uh, the option to set aside some money uh, that can be used for just this sort of thing, open space acquisition, uh, historic preservation, uh, community housing, uh, and uh, recreation. Uh, and when we took that uh, uh, act before the, the referendum to adopt the act uh, before the voters, uh, the prospect of acquiring Kessler Woods was very much in the, in the forefront of, of those discussions. So uh, when the door opened, uh, we did have uh, fortunately access to the funds uh, and uh, were uh, lucky to be able to um, put together a, a, a bid that um, made it possible for the city to acquire it. Uh, Doug, I understand that in making plans for the acquisition of Kessler, you had the opportunity to work with a developing company that was uh, focused on the idea of some housing. Tell us about that. Well, it became clear early on that uh, the city couldn't afford the price tag to acquire all of this property. Uh, so we began looking for a partner uh, that would develop uh, a part of the property along the lines of uh, the uh, goals that the city had set. One of the key figures in this has been Alderman Rick Lipoff. And we're here today talking with him. Could you tell us what your role has been in the acquisition of uh, Kessler Woods and in what way you promoted the idea that the city should acquire this open space? Well, my role as an alderman from the ward where Kessler Woods is located uh, was to uh, be on the Kessler Woods committee, uh, which was made up of, of uh, a few aldermen, people from the conservators, um, the mayor, other people on the legal department. Uh, and as the Ward 8 Alderman, obviously it was foremost in my mind to do what's best for, for the neighborhood. Uh, and as a real estate professional, uh, looking at what could be done with that area, um, led me to uh, really get behind the plan that came out. The partnership uh, with the developer 
uh, led me to see that that was the best, um, the best way uh, to purchase this land. Uh, and after we figured that out, it was my job to take it through the board to convince uh, the 24 aldermen uh, that it was the best use of the money and it was the best plan in front of us. The, uh, this land, which had previously been owned by the Edison Company and then NSTAR, was up for sale. Uh, could it have been used and developed more extensively than the, the present plan? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, uh, in effect, saved approximately 20 acres uh, to be used as conservation land, never to be built on. Uh, the complete 40 plus or minus acres uh, could have been blanketed uh, with single families, condominiums, um, probably a third to um, two-thirds more intense use uh, than we arrived at uh, by putting our CPA money uh, on the table and, and saving all that land. Um, some of the aldermen needed a little bit more um, convincing because it was a lot of money. It was a new uh, thing, a, a private-public partnership uh, with a developer. Uh, usually a developer is a negative word uh, because they're coming in front of the Board of Aldermen wanting to change the landscape of our city so often. Um, in this case, uh, we were looking for a developer to save our city, to, to help make uh, a project uh, a reality, to help us get control of a project that without a partner we never would have been able to do. We're here at the headquarters of the Cornerstone Corporation speaking with Tom Southworth. Tom is the Director of Development here at Cornerstone and he's a Vice President of the organization. I'd like to ask Tom how it came about that Cornerstone worked uh, in cooperation with the City of Newton in acquiring this uh, area of Kessler Woods. Sure. Um, back in 2003, the um, Attorney General's Office in cooperation with the Department of Telecommunications and Energy required Boston Edison to sell this 42-acre parcel of land in Newton. Uh, they put it out for a public bid and that we were one of probably 15 to 20 developers that were going forward to actually put a bid on the property. Um, prior to submitting a bid, however, it became, we became aware of the fact that the city had long had an interest in acquiring the property, maintaining it as open space. But the city recognized it didn't have the resources to be the highest bidder. And so it requested developers to submit proposals to the city, which we did and that um, after several meetings with the city, several presentations, after they've spent a lot of time in examining all the development proposals, we at Cornerstone were selected to submit a cooperative bid uh, to Boston Edison for the acquisition of the property, which we did, and which we ultimately won with a high bid of $15,100,000. So it's a cooperative venture then. It is. And it represents a private public cooperative effort. Well, it is. I think it's a classic example of a public-private partnership. The city uh, utilized $5 million of its Community Preservation Act funds, and we, pay, and we put in the additional $10,100,000 for the total bid. And that I think it's important to point out that the, at the time that Boston Edison had put the property out for bid, it, it had already received preliminary plan approval from the planning department for 67 single-family house lots, which would have utilized the entire 42-acre parcel. Now, can you show us uh, on your chart here just what portions of the Kessler Woods that you have uh, plans for development? Sure, I'd be happy to do that, Chris. Um, I think in the big picture of things, if you look at it simply, this is being a, f a total 42-acre parcel beginning up on Brookline Street over to LaGrange Street and back down onto Vine Street. Essentially what happened with this public-private partnership is that Cornerstone Corporation ended up with approximately 16 acres for development, about eight acres for a single family development up here, and about eight acres in here for our proposed condominium uh, development. And the balance of the land, the balance of the 26 acres, is now permanent open space dedicated to the public in the city of Newton. And the city of Newton has actually taken, as of today, well, actually, as of a year or so ago, taken title to uh, this parcel here and this parcel here, that's 12 acres of land that the city currently owns. At the time we took title to the property, we also granted a conservation restriction easement to the city for all of this land in through here, and that's approximately 13 acres. So at the end of the day, when we are fully developed, 
the city ends up with 26 acres of pristine open space, or more than 62% of the site is per, a permanent open space. Now, this area is classified in some part as a wetland, and I gather that's because of the stream flowing through it. We have a perennial stream, and then it's joined by another stream that dries up uh, part of the year, and that uh, results in some restrictions upon where uh, buildings can be placed. Can you talk about that? Certainly. The, um, a couple of, well, there are two or three, several important factors that led to location of the development. One of the more important ones is that the fact of the matter is that not only is this now city land, but this is also city land here, and this is city land here. So by maintaining all of this as open space, you have continuous open space going into previously owned land, uh, land owned by the city. Now there is a brook, brook called Sawmill Brook that flows through here. That's a restriction on development. And this whole area in through here are wetlands. And that's another restriction on our development. So when you look at the site plan as, as, a, as a whole, you come to realize very quickly that the only logical places for development is here and here. And the rest is nice open space. It's wetland. It's contiguous. Um, we at Cornerstone, as part of our cooperative bidding agreement with the city, the agreement we reached with the city prior to submitting our bid, is that we're going to provide $75,000 for construction of trails within within the open space, within the 26 acres. I think it's also important to know, Chris, that we, all, we also agreed with the city to uh, provide $250,000 for infrastructure improvement, for drainage, for sewer, as part of our agreement. Can you tell us uh, <clears throat> at uh, what spot uh, construction has already begun in this area? Sure. Um, we've begun construction on our roadway for the 13 single-family homes off of Brookline Street. Um, all of the utilities are in, the water, the sewer, the drainage, uh, electrical, cable, uh, and those sorts of things are being put in as we speak. Um, but this roadway should be have its initial pavement done in sometime within the next couple of weeks. And the other, other site here off of uh, LaGrange Street is still in the planning stages, I Yes, it is still very much in the planning stages, and that uh, we've been working closely and cooperatively, you know, with town officials coming up with a sound, what really we consider to be a good site plan. We've gone through several variations on it, and that in the very near future, we hope to be finalizing our plans. With I'd like to clarify one point, and that is that some people have referred to uh, Kessler Woods as a swamp. <laughs> and they hear the word wetland. Could you uh, explain that a little sure. more clearly? Well, I mean, as I indicated earlier, there are wetlands that run up and through here. But the land that the city bought, the 12 acres that the city bought, is high and dry land. I mean, there was probably 40 single-family house lots proposed over here under the original Edison plan. And that would have happened. Had it not been for the city's participation, there's no question in my mind this entire 42-acre parcel would have been fully developed. Thank you. You're welcome, Chris. As I understand it, a, a large section of this uh, Kessler Woods area uh, is classified as a wetland. Mm -hmm. And how does that work out in your planning? Well, the, the, uh, the wetland area is protected by uh, the state uh, under state wetland statutes as well as city uh, ordinances. Uh, so there's a portion of the property that couldn't be developed under any circumstance. Uh, and uh, so what we looked at uh, was what were the highest and best uses of the developable pieces of property. Uh, and um, we talk, took into consideration the conservation values as well as the potential for, uh, for uh, home sites. Uh, and we worked with a consultant and uh, identified uh, two places on the property uh, that uh, worked well for, uh, for housing uh, and uh, gave us then the opportunity to preserve all of the rest. Now, is some of that housing classified as affordable housing? Yes, a 20% a, um, uh, of the uh, units that will be put on the um, LaGrange Street side of the property uh, will be set aside as affordable. Rick, is there value in preserving Kessler as a wetland? Does that value extend to the people living around the area? Absolutely. Um, the building that's gone on uh, above Kessler over the past 20 years has really um, displaced a lot of the groundwater and changed uh, the patterns where the water flows and we've had some serious problems um, in the Old Farm and Peregrine Road areas uh, with some serious flooding. We've done a lot to um, to help the situation in relining pipes and, and, and doing several um, engineering projects 
but if we took that 20 acres that we saved uh, and developed around those wetlands moving right up towards them, uh, it would only make the problems, the water problems worse, not only for that Newton neighborhood, but most likely for a piece of Brookline and a piece of West Roxbury as well. So saving that land, that natural um, sponge, so to speak, to take it to the brook and take it away was very important as well. Uh, are you still involved in the development and preservation of Kessler Woods? Well, I have two, two interests going forward. One is I, I sit on the Conservation Commission, and the Conservation Commission has the statutory responsibility for reviewing the uh, housing proposals uh, to make certain that they conform to state regulations, particularly the wetlands laws. Um, and uh, in addition, uh, as you well know, uh, Chris, uh, the conservators have uh, continuing interest in uh, developing pathways and providing access uh, to this new property. So. The developers who are cooperating with the city in the development of Kessler Woods are, uh, have promised to contribute to the uh, formation of trails through the, uh, through the wooded area. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, what, one, of the, one of the reasons that we were happy to work with this developer because, is because uh, they were uh, amenable uh, to providing that kind of support. Uh, and uh, they'll be contributing a substantial amount of money for the development of uh, access trails uh, and uh, other amenities on the conservation property. Now, Doug, when the city acquires a parcel of land like this for conservation purposes and recreation, uh, who's responsible for monitoring it and seeing to it that uh, trails are built and that it's maintained properly? The, if it's designated as conservation property, uh, it falls under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission and the Conservation Commission, working with the Planning Department, uh, has responsibility for maintaining it. In addition, uh, the Newton Conservators uh, holds uh, a restriction uh, on, the, on this property uh, and uh, takes responsibility as a part of uh, that agreement uh, to monitor the property and make certain that it's used uh, properly. To the extent that there are costs associated with maintenance, uh, the city bears that uh, responsibility, <clears throat> but in truth there's not a lot of cost that's associated with maintaining conservation property because we, by definition, uh, don't want to do a lot of work in these uh, areas. Uh, we try to keep them as natural as possible. If a tree falls down, uh, we leave it where it is unless it's crossing a pathway, in which case we may cut out a piece of it uh, to allow access. Uh, but beyond that, there's not a lot of upkeep and maintenance involved. For information about the Newton Conservators programs dedicated to preserving open space in Newton for public use and enjoyment, please visit www.newtonconservators.org. Our website has lots of information about the natural history of our Newton parks, together with all of its walking trails. It also has beautiful photographs and tells about the Conservators' activities. And remember, you can order our Walking Trails booklet online. It shows the trails in all the parks.